Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're gonna paint this old shed window. Now this painting was originally done by one of our art monsters named Barb Hall, who took a photograph of an old shed that had been in her family for a few generations. I fell in love with it and asked her if I could recreate it, and she was gracious enough to allow me and us to do so. Before we get started, make sure that you subscribe and then click the little bell button so that you can get a notification whenever I put out a new video. Also make sure to check out the video description below for a full list of materials. And now we can get started. So I have a black canvas and you can either buy a canvas that's already painted black, you can use black gesso, or like me, you can just paint it with black paint. So I've done that and it's dry and now I have a piece of chalk. And the first thing I wanna do is kind of sketch out where I want my window and the boards. And we don't have to be real precise with this. It is an old, old shed or barn or house. And so if the lines are a little crooked, and things aren't actually even or join up properly together, that's perfectly okay. So I'm just gonna start with a rectangle for my window and I'm including in this square or rectangle that I'm gonna make, I'm including the boards that are gonna be along the side of my window. Let's go ahead and draw in the boards that will be along the edge of the window. And since this is just chalk, we can, you know, sketch this out as many times as you want. If you don't like what you did, just get a damp brush, wipe it away, and do it again. I think I like this for the opening of my window, and then everything else will be boards. So let's go ahead and sketch them in. And I'm gonna do them kind of random. I'm gonna have some that fit together better. Maybe I'll have one that comes down a little bit farther there. Think about who might have built this. So I kind of picture it being, you know, an, an older farmer or something who's just kind of using pieces of wood that he has here and there. And not everything's the same size. Some of it he had to cut a little strange to make it fit on a corner, and that's okay. Let's give our window a little bit of a window sill. Oh, I don't want this line there because it matches up with that one and I don't want to make it seem like there's a split there. So I'm going to move it. Maybe I'll move it to right here. To that edge. Now we're going to start filling in our boards. And this is going to be very similar to the way we did the boards in the flowers against the fence video. So I'm going to take my half inch flat brush and this is the half inch flat out of my personal line of paint brushes that are available on my website. And there's a link in the video description below to where you can get your very own paint brushes like mine. I'm going to take my brush and dip it in my water, get it nice and wet and then wipe it off on the edge. Now I'm using unbleached titanium, raw umber, and Mars black, but you can use any combination of colors that you like. I'm gonna load up with the unbleached titanium. Remember to kind of smash it in there. That sucks the paint up into the bristles. This is gonna be the base color for all of our boards. Okay, so I've got a good load on there, and I'm gonna come in here and grab a bit of brown. I didn't mix it. See how I've just kind of got a ball of it on the end? and then a little bit of black. Now, whenever I go back for more, I'm gonna pick up a slightly different combination of colors so I can get a nice weathered look in the boards here. Just decide on one that you wanna start on and start laying the color down. Now, you don't have to be real precise. Again, I'm using the chalk lines as a guide, but I'm not trying to get right up to them and give perfectly straight lines. But try not to work your paint too much just get the board filled in and then leave it alone. This is the same board here. Now on this next board, I want it to look a little different. So I just picked up a tiny bit of black. I still have the other colors on here. I'm gonna go right up in there, but I'm not getting all the way 
to the chalk line between the boards. Pretty close, but I'm not trying to get it right up against it. If a little bit of your black shows through, that's okay. So let me show you here. You can see the little speckly chalk line right in here. So I'm gonna come right up to it. And if I happen to connect the two boards a little bit, that's okay. I really just want to let a little tiny bit of that black show and remind myself where the different boards are. Just laying down that paint, letting it be a little bit streaky. Use super light pressure if you get a hard line. Just touch it with super light pressure and it will just streak that line out without blending the colors together more. Let's do that one more time right here just to show you. I picked up a little more brown and black just to make sure I had a difference of color between those two boards. And I haven't picked up any more of the unbleached titanium. I loaded up quite a bit with it. So really all I'm getting is a little brown, a little black whenever I need more paint. The painting that I'm basing this on was done by one of our fellow art monsters named Barb Hall. She took a photo of a shed that her great grandfather, I believe, built and painted it. And I think she said that later that night, the shed fell down. So it doesn't actually exist anymore, which is unfortunate, but at least she got a great painting with some good memories attached to it. And I'm really thankful that she allowed me to recreate this for everybody. So I know some of you guys like to paint and sell the paintings that you do from my videos. And if you do that and you give me credit for the video, I would also ask that you would give Barb credit for being the originator of the image. If you get any boards that you feel like are too dark or too light, just grab one of the colors that you feel like you're missing and add it back in there. Wet down my brush a little bit because I'm starting to get a little bit of a hard time getting down into the texture and I feel like it's just because my brush is a little too dry. Yep, because that fixed it. You can turn your brush on the edge like that if you need to. That will help you get down into some small areas as well as actually blend out any hard streaks that you're having a difficult time getting to blend away with your brush being flat. So as soon as I find one of those streaks, I will show you. Pick up just a little bit of white there. Remember, as always, heavy pressure lays paint down, light pressure blends paint together. I'm gonna go on the edge there to get right up to my chalk line, pretty close to that last board. Okay, so right here I have a hard line between the light and the dark, and I actually don't mind that. But I wanted to take this as, as an opportunity to show you that if you put the tip of the brush right onto that line and go across it, see that helps smooth it right out. Or sometimes if you go over it flat, it doesn't, it'll soften it a little bit, but it won't really smooth it away. So I'm just gonna go and fill in all of these boards around here. And then we'll start on the vertical ones near the window.
Okay, let's do the little windowsill. I almost lost my chalk line there, painted into the next board, but it doesn't matter, like I said. It's really just a guideline. We're gonna go back and add the black between the boards. So if you do happen to lose some of your black, that's all right. All right, now on our vertical boards, and again, I'm gonna follow the same direction that the board is laying. If we went like this on this board, it wouldn't look like a slice of wood that way. It would, it would look, I don't know what it would look like, but it would look flat. Okay, we're gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and start adding some details. Now we're gonna add some highlights and shadows to just areas that I feel like need them. So if you look at this and you decide that you like what you have going on in here and you don't wanna add highlights and shadows, you can absolutely skip this part. I just have a few boards where I think I'd like to see something darker and a few boards where I feel like I might wanna see a few things lighter. So I'm gonna take this little quarter inch flat brush, wet it in my jar, and wipe it on the edge. So I'm just picking up a little bit of my unbleached titanium and wiping a bit of it off. And I feel like this window ledge here, I wanna see a little more of a highlight on it. So I'm just lightly with the edge of my brush, just kind of dusting over top of it. I'm doing my best not to, getting it, not to get it up into the black but if it does a little bit, that's okay, because I'm gonna add a window frame there too. I did pick up a little bit of water there, because I'm getting too much of the texture of the canvas. There we go. When I was practicing this before, I was using old canvases that didn't have a lot of texture, so I didn't have to worry about that. This one is a brand new canvas, so it's got a little more texture to it. There, I like that a lot better. So I'm just gonna add a couple of these brighter highlights here and there, and then we'll start moving on. And before you judge whether or not one of these highlights looks good or bad, I want you to apply it and walk away get a couple feet away from it and look at it from a distance. Because up close that might just look like a weird smear of paint over top of everything else, but at a distance it might look like a little dried out bleached spot of the wood. I'm not using a lot of paint, very thin amount of paint. See, just a little bit. I'm gonna wipe it over here, mix it in with what's on my brush. If my brush is a little dry, I just get a little extra water and mix it in there. I'm just gonna start on one side and streak it until it stops. If you get a spot that you feel like is a little much, then just grab some of your darker color and go back over it. And that'll take it right away. All right, now we're gonna add some shadow and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just using black 
just a little bit. See, that's not a ton of black. A little drip of water and mix it in there. I'm gonna wipe off a bit of it. Now, this is a ledge, and right now it doesn't look like it's poking out any farther than this board. So one way I'm gonna help it make it seem like it is, is to take a bit of this black and streak it over this bottom one. Give it a bit of a shadow under here. I'm just going for a real subtle shadow. But you can make it as dark and as heavy as you like. I'm using light pressure to just smooth that line out. And I'm gonna bring it along this edge a bit here too. It'll seem like our light source is over here kind of shining this way. I'm gonna grab a bit of this brown, maybe a tiny hint of my white, get a little bit of a lighter color, but still, still darker. About the same color as the wood right here. Just make sure I don't have a hard line between the transition from the shadow onto the wood. Okay, I'm gonna go and do something similar all over, just under little bits of the boards where I wanna make it seem like maybe the board above it is poking out a little bit farther, casting a little bit of a shadow. I'm just kind of putting the brush right on that edge and then lightly just swooping it down a bit. Wherever you feel like you might not have enough separation between the two boards. And remember, we're still gonna add some black lines between the boards. But if you feel like the colors are too similar and you just wanna give that added separation, just the tiniest amount of black, just kinda of swoop down. I'm just softening it with my fingers so I don't see a bunch of the brush strokes. Spend as much time here as you want. If you feel like you need to do a lot of shading, take the time and do it. If I were really giving myself the time that I wanted here, which I'm not because I'm trying to, you know, make a video that's not so long that you don't want to watch it, but I could probably spend quite a lot of time shading these boards and adding highlights. And you know, you can take anything away. If you spend several hours making some shadows and highlights only to decide you don't like them, then you know, paint over them with, with your base color. Kick them back a little bit with your base color. You really can't go wrong here. 
You can do this until you are completely satisfied. Not only am I using this to kind of add a shadow where I feel like another board might be poking out a little bit farther, but maybe these boards, since they're so weathered and old, just have some spots that are a little bit darker in, you know, in the middle of the board. It might not be a shadow per se, just kind of a stain on the board. If you have matte medium and you like to use matte medium, this would be a perfect place for matte medium to use instead of water. Got a little too much, I feel like, right there. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more brown, put the hint of white, about that board color again, and just kind of smooth over that. Let's start adding our window frame. So I've cleaned off my brush. I'm gonna load up with my unbleached titanium and a little bit of my brown. I just don't want it to be pure white. And we're gonna come along the edge here. I'm gonna use my brush flat, and my hand is resting on my canvas to control my pressure. I'm just gonna bring a line pretty much straight down. It's starting to fuzz out a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just getting the idea of where that window frame is right now. We're gonna add highlights and shadows and all kinds of stuff to it. So just get the line in so you know where it is. And on the other side. Again, this is a super old shed. Remember, it fell down the day the photo this painting was based on was taken. So it doesn't have to look like it's gonna last a million years. It can look like it's already starting to fall down. So if your lines are crooked, that's okay. exactly why I didn't use a ruler or anything on this. I wanted it to have kind of a twisty old feel. And then we'll do the one across the top and the one across the bottom. All right, so let's add some highlights. I'm gonna grab some of my unbleached titanium, just kind of load it up on that. A little bit of my brown. Just to get kind of a neutral color. It's still fairly light. And I have a tiny bit of ultramarine blue here. And I'm gonna grab just a bit of that. Just enough to mix in, cool it off, and get me a nice grayish color. I'm gonna mostly use the edge of my brush here. I'm gonna come in and smooth out this line. Fill in the little holes. Remember to use the very edge of the brush to draw crisp lines. Don't try and use it flat. That time I just picked up my unbleached titanium. Just like when we were doing the boards, whenever I come back, I'm gonna pick up a slightly different mixture of colors. Make this look weathered and maybe water stained a little bit. A little bit of brown.
a little bit more of my blue and white. And I don't mind if I see a little bit of that blue in there. Obviously, I don't want a bright blue color. But that little bit of blue will just kind of help set it apart from the rest of the wood. See how I'm just kind of streaking it on there, not really focusing on blending colors. If you happen to get down into the black too much, right now I would say don't worry about it. You can either paint a little black over it later or just plan on making sure that your leaves and stems that we're gonna add in a minute cover it. All right, now we're gonna start adding some definition to these boards, adding our black lines between and giving a little bit of wood grain. So I'm gonna take my angle brush and this angle brush has actually been abused quite a bit and the bristles are stained, but this is the angle brush that we will have in our line of detail brushes, which should be coming out in the next couple of months. So I'm gonna wet it really good in my jar and just wipe a little bit off. And then I'm gonna load up with black paint. I wanna keep the paint smooth, I don't want blobs of it, so notice how I'm kinda of smoothing it as I pull it out and making sure that my brush still has a nice chisel to it. Now, as I start adding the lines to between the boards, I'm gonna let my brush kind of wiggle if it wants to. I'm not gonna worry about making exact, precise lines. Since these are old boards, if we have very crisp lines between, that is gonna throw off the look a little bit. A little bit of extra pressure is gonna make fatter lines. A little bit of lighter pressure is gonna make thinner lines. Kind of take a cue from what's going on where your chalk is. So see if I wipe the chalk away there, you can tell that I have a bit of a gap and that's okay, I'm gonna work with that and in some places I won't have as much of a gap. Now on the ends of my boards here, some of them can have sharp edges, but if it looks like it already doesn't have a sharp edge like this one, I'm gonna go with that. So I'm just gonna take my brush and kinda dab it like that, just around this edge. I'm not gonna take it into this board. We'll deal with that board in a minute. So I'm just giving it kind of a, a little bit of a wobbly edge there. And then here I might start a, with a little bit more pressure to get a fatter line and bring it back to that line. And that's really all I'm gonna do right now, all over the canvas. Some places are gonna be thicker, some places are gonna be thinner. And you can change it if you've got an area where you don't have much of your line showing between the boards, you can always kind of cut that off and make like a, maybe a little chunk came out of the board there. And just paint that in. Keep a little extra water on your brush. 
just to help your paint move a little bit easier. Don't worry about the inside of the boards just yet. We're just gonna do the edges on these side boards. I'm not gonna rest my hand on the canvas because that will take a little bit of control away from me. And I'll get some fatter lines here and there, make it look a little more natural. cut that corner off a bit because it kind of insinuated to me that it was already cut off there. So I just went with that. These ones, the vertical board went over top of the edge. So I'm actually going to keep these ones a little on the straighter, thinner side. Just doing one board at a time. I'm not taking that line all the way down here because then all of these boards will match and I don't really want them to match. So notice I'm just kind of pressing, pressing, pressing. Just on the ends. And here I'm dragging it down and letting my brush go thin and thick as it wants to. Just do each of them a little different. On our window ledge here, I'm gonna keep this edge a little on the straighter side. And I think I'm gonna do a heavier line here at the base make sure it kind of blends into my shadow just a little bit. A little more pressure there, get a little fat spot where maybe a chunk of the wood fell out. So those of you who feel like you have a hard time making straight lines, getting even pressure on your brush, this is perfect for you. So you don't have to worry about that. You know, normally when I'm doing this, I would have my hand on my canvas so that I could get perfect control, but I'm holding my brush back a little farther and letting my hand kind of hover. I put a lot of pressure there and really get up into that top board and give a little bit of an uneven edge here. I'm not worrying about my window frame just yet. All right, let's do our vertical boards. Oops, I missed a little mark right there. All right, same thing on the top here. I'm just kind of pressing into that. Get a little bit of an uneven line. Maybe there's a little chunk gone there. I'm gonna put my hand on my canvas just a little bit here because I want this to be just a little tighter. I don't want my window frame to be too terribly wonky. If my line gets out of control, I'm gonna let it be out of control into the board, not so much in the window frame. If you don't get it all, I mean, that's fine. That's why we painted the canvas black in the first place. Just make the lines look like you want them to look. All 
All right, now I'm gonna take my angle brush and decide which of these boards I want to have a little knot in them. I'm not gonna put a knot in all of them. I'm just gonna take the tip of the angle brush and kind of make a little, just a weird little shape like that. Now this is gonna be very similar to what we did in the flowers on the fence video. I'm really gonna focus my pressure to the front about one third of my angle brush. And again, I'm holding it far back. That takes away a little bit of control. And the important thing with the little lines that we're gonna do here is that they don't really cross. You know, the lines kind of represent the rings in a tree and the rings of a tree don't cross over each other. You may have a crack here and there that runs down through them and that's fine. So I'm gonna start up here just lightly. I'm letting my brush wiggle a little, go around that little knot and let it kind of trail off there. Maybe I'll do another one here. Kind of follows along it, goes around the knot and comes back. I'm just gonna kind of add a few of those like that wherever I feel like I need one. And you can put a little heavier pressure on your brush here and there if you want. Kind of insinuate a crack in the wood. Maybe I'm gonna make a fat one right there on the edge. It comes and tapers off. And I'm just gonna do that all throughout here. Kind of randomly. If you're more comfortable using a liner brush for this, you can absolutely do that. The reason I'm using an angle brush is because when I lose control of the pressure a bit, then I get these kind of jagged marks in there, where with a liner brush, I get a much smoother line. So it just depends on the look you're going for and what you're most comfortable with. Just because I'm the most comfortable with my angle brush doesn't mean that that's the only brush that you can use here. Let me get you a close-up shot of what I'm doing around those knots. So here's one here. Again, just focusing the pressure on the front third of my brush. Kind of letting it wiggle up around that knot, back in a little and trail off. We'll do another one that's along the side of it. It goes around the knot, comes back, and follows that line. Put a little more pressure here and there where you want to crack. And I kind of like where my brush started here. I have a fatter spot. I'm going to take the corner, the long point of my angle brush, and I'm just going to kind of push into that a bit. Take that down to the edge. I like that. Now there could be a million types of wood that this shed is made out of. So if your wood looks totally different than mine, that's okay. If your colors are completely different, maybe you use different colors or you just mix them different, there's nothing wrong with that. Depends on you know, where the shed is, what kind of weather it's endured, what kind of you know, minerals are in the air or the soil or what kind of temperatures, all kinds of variables will affect what wood looks like in different places. Let's come off of the edge here and make a, another little crack in the board. And we might see a few more of paintings recreated from some of you guys. In the Facebook group, 
we had a post of people wanting me to do this. So there were a lot of paintings in there that were super awesome that really inspired me. And I got permission from a couple of different people to do it. So we might have a couple other recreations coming up soon. And then we may do that again at some point. I'm gonna put a nice heavy one there. Keep a little extra water on your brush whenever you're not getting a nice crisp line. All right, now we're gonna go to a small round brush and you can see a little bit better the color of the bristles here. This is one of the other brushes that we'll have in our line of detail brushes, which I'll be releasing soon. So I wet it in my jar a bit and now I have burnt umber. So we used raw umber for the wood and now we have burnt umber. The raw umber is a much cooler brown. If you notice in the wood here, it almost looks like we have a hint of blue in there, even though we don't. The burnt umber is a much warmer color. See how warm that is? And so it's gonna stand apart from the rest of the brown that we have. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my unbleached titanium. Just mix it up about like that. And again, every time I go back for more paint, I'm gonna pick up a slightly different color. Now I'm gonna use the point of my brush and just start drawing some vines coming right from the edge of the windowsill. Try not to go over the windowsill. And just start twisting some little branches. Now inside here, if you can't see them too well, that's okay because it's dark inside of this little shed. And so they might not be real bright. In fact, if you make them too bright in here, it's gonna kind of throw off your light a little bit and look kind of strange. I'm just gonna twist some through here. I'm not taking them outside just yet. Just wherever they wanna go. Some can be thicker, some can be thinner. Some can disappear down to the other windowsill. And as this color dries, it's gonna get a little bit darker. Again, that's because the binder that holds the pigment together is white when it's wet. And as it dries, it becomes transparent. So that's why you see some colors get darker when they dry. Now, while you're doing this, what I want you to do is think about where you want your window broken. Because I'm gonna have this window be broken somehow. And so that's why I'm not taking any of these out just yet. Because if I take a branch out up here, but then I decide I want my glass still to be there, then it's gonna be weird because your branch wouldn't go through the unbroken glass. So just be thinking about that. And in a minute, we will start taking some branches out based on where we decide we want the window to be broken. They don't all have to connect. This is so tangled and just an absolute mess in here. So, you know, don't try to focus too much on making all of these connect to one another because since it's such a mess, you may not see where one begins or where another one ends. Okay, I think that's good for now. So I've decided that I'm gonna have some glass be attached all the way up here I'm gonna have it be kind of broken here. I'll have my window frame come across here and maybe I'll have another piece of glass down in the corner here. So now I know where I want my glass to be. I can start taking some of these branches out based on that. So I know it's gonna be broken and open over here. So I'm gonna take this little branch and start bringing it out. Let's darken that up a little bit. And here's a hint, when you're drawing your lines, if you start at the fatter spot, so you're putting a little more pressure on your brush, like this, and you're drawing it to the edge and lightening your pressure to get a thinner line, so you run out of paint a little bit faster. But 
If you start from the end of the branch, start with your fine line, and as you come down, you start putting on more pressure, you can get a much longer branch in one brush stroke. And that's because the tip of the brush doesn't hold quite as much paint. So if you get it all off at the end, by the time you bring the pressure up, there's not a lot of paint there. So on some of these that I want a good amount of definition on, like these ones outside, notice I started from in here with the tip of my brush and I brought it out about as far as I wanted and it tapered off. Now I'm gonna grab more paint and I'm gonna start at the end of that branch and bring it back, slowly adding more pressure as I go and that helps me be able to define it a little bit better. So don't worry if you have to go over it a couple of times, that's okay. I'm gonna bring a little branch up from here from the inside and bring it out and my paint kind of tapers off. But I'll just grab some more, start at the end and bring it back up. And because this color is warmer than that previous color, we can see it a little bit better. And I just grabbed a little bit of white there to give it a little highlight. Since it's outside, it might have a bit of a highlight on it. Let's add a little highlight to this one too. So I loaded up mostly with that darker color. I'm just gonna grab a couple of these, bring it out. And grab just a little bit of that white, start at the end. So I'm highlighting it and defining it at the same time. I don't wanna take that highlight too far in though, into the window. At the bottom here, notice I'm loading up with quite a bit of paint. My brush is kind of gunked up. I'm gonna come down to the bottom, put a good amount of pressure on, get a fat line. And these are some more substantial vines and weeds that are growing in here. I'm kind of twisting my brush as I go, just kind of rolling it back and forth. A little bit of my unbleached titanium, super light pressure on the end there and just come back and kind of redefine it. Put a little water on your brush to get a nice crisp line. Take your time here. There's no reason that you have to do these branches and little twigs and stuff all in one brush stroke. You can go back over them as many times as you like and take some of them off the edge of the canvas. It's much more interesting than keeping everything just tightly confined in here. So I'm just gonna go and add quite a few coming out of the window, maybe going back into the window, all over the place, just for now. Keep the ones inside of the window, a little on the darker side. Don't really put too many of these brighter highlights in here. Just yet, we can do that later. Now I am gonna take just a little bit of a lighter color and give a few in here, just right by 
where I want my window broken because they are getting direct sunlight. So they might be a little bit lighter. Okay, I think that's good for now. I may go back and add some more, but we're gonna start on some leaves. So I have this quarter inch filbert, and I have some light green permanent, some primary yellow, and some phthalo green. Now, any of these colors that you don't have, that's fine. Just use a light green, a dark green, and a yellow. So I'm gonna start with some light green permanent. I'm gonna mix some of my burnt umber into it and get a nice dark color. And I may or may not use the phthalo green. I haven't decided yet. So I want this color to still appear green, but just a very dark green. And I might add just the tiniest, tiniest speck of my unbleached titanium to it, just so it's not so transparent. Now, we're gonna do very simple leaf shapes here. You can do them, you can put as much energy into them and actually draw leaves as you want. But what I'm gonna do is use the edge of my brush, not the flat. And we're gonna do something very simple like this. I'm gonna take the edge of my brush and just press and kind of flick a little. Just a very simple shape. Now again, there might be some little branches deep inside of here that we don't see. So don't try and put all of your leaves right against these branches. That's gonna make it look kind of unnatural. So we're just gonna add some small leaves just kind of here and there. And again, as this color dries, it's gonna get a little bit darker. That's really all I'm gonna do all through here. Get some up in this side where our window glass is gonna be. Keep going back to your paint. If your leaves start to lose their shape, even if you don't need more paint, just go and kind of flatten your brush out again. Let some of them overlap. It's more interesting that way. Don't take any out onto your frame just yet. I'm gonna mix up just a slightly lighter color. So I'm gonna add a little bit more green. Still just a tiny, tiny speck of my white. And we can make some larger ones that are a little bit closer to the highlighted parts of our branches or our twigs, vines, whatever they are. These ones are getting a little more direct light. I might add just a little more white into there. And a little bit more white into that same mixture. And I'm gonna grab a bit of yellow. And I didn't mix that, I just grabbed the yellow onto my brush. And I'm gonna bring these quite close to the edge and maybe they do go out over top just a little bit. Just get different colors whenever you go in. Slightly different mixture. A little more pressure, get some slightly bigger ones. And now, since we're gonna start coming outside, I mixed less brown in there. I've got some of my, a little bit of brown, there's some of the white, more green, and then I just pulled just a tiny bit of the yellow out. We'll start bringing some of these out. Again, they don't have to be right up against your branch. They can even be just kind of floating off into space. 
If you wanted to draw little stem pieces between the branch and the leaves, you could go ahead and do that. I kind of like the little more impressionist look of them just kind of floating off into space. And I may not even put leaves on all of these. Maybe some of them are little dead twigs. They don't have leaves anymore. Just a couple in here that are a little brighter. Just here and there, very small. I'm gonna get my dryer and make sure all of this green is dry because I'm gonna put the window frame across this way. And I just wanna make sure I don't drag any of that green into the white mixture that I'm gonna use. All right, we're going back to the quarter inch flap, loading up with the white. A little bit of the raw umber and a little hint of the ultramarine blue. I'm going to use the edge of my brush and right about in the middle, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to draw a line from one side to the other and if it's a little crooked, that's okay. When you get to the side, just kind of streak it so it blends in there. And then I'm going to whiten it out. We'll highlight it similar to how we did the edges. Just slash some of these colors on. A little different mixture every time. And again, we're gonna give it kind of a, a broken hanging frame. So I'm gonna start a little bit above it, bring it over and it's gonna be crooked. It's kind of meeting up with it. Widen it out. and grab a little bit of brown on one side. And I'm gonna put a shadow across the top here of this bottom frame so that we can kind of tell the difference between the two and it seems like the one on top is throwing a bit of a shadow onto it. white and a bit of blue. Whoa, not that much blue. And we'll just add some highlight to this top frame. Okay, now I've got this larger filbert and we're gonna make some leaves very similar to what we did, but they're just gonna be larger. So maybe I am gonna take a little bit of this phthalo green, mix it in here, just get a little bit of a deeper green. Load my brush up with that. And I think on one side, I'm gonna grab a little hint of my burnt umber. And on the other side, I'm gonna grab a little hint of the yellow so we get some interest. Now on these larger vines, that's where I'm gonna concentrate these leaves. I'm gonna do them the same way, just kind of push and drag. And I think that might be just a little too green. So I'm gonna mix a bit of brown in there. There we go. I added just a little bit of the white and I like that better. It's 
Still just using the edge just like before. Let's bring one kind of coming over the edge of the frame. And then I think I'm just going to go through with a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow and highlight some of these. They don't all need a highlight. Just give it a little bit of a differentiation between some of them. You can even grab a little brown. If you feel like one is too bright, just grab a little of your brown. Okay, I'm gonna dry this one more time. We're gonna do the last part and then we're done. All right, so now we're gonna add our broken glass panes into here and then we're done. And I'm gonna use transparent mixing white. Now, a lot of times people tell me they just can't find transparent mixing white. If you're looking for Liquitex, it's a heavy body paint. Other brands may call it zinc white. It's the same thing pretty much. If you don't have the transparent mixing white, you can try and use titanium white and maybe a little glazing medium or matte medium, but you wanna be so, so careful because the titanium white is very opaque where the transparent mixing white is very transparent. So I'm gonna load up with a bit of Transparent mixing white, not a ton of it. And I'm gonna grab just the tiniest, tiniest speck of my ultramarine blue and mix it in there. And I'm using my little quarter inch flat brush again. So I'm just gonna start up at the top and just kind of drag it down. And you know what, I don't wanna use this brush. I'm gonna use my half inch flat brush instead. Just gets down into the texture a little bit better. Start right up at the edge, it doesn't have to be perfect, and drag it down. I'm just gonna start up at the top here. Just get a bit of it on, and then we'll worry about the edge of the broken glass in a minute. So I'm just dragging it over until it about fades out. Get a little bit more. And decide, I'm using the edge of the brush where that broken frame is, kind of coming down about like that. And then before that dries, I'm gonna take the edge of my brush right on that line, because I don't really want too definite of a line. And I'm dragging it straight up. Just straight up. This does not have to be real even in here. You can have streaks, because it's an old, dirty window. Let's get kind of a jagged little angle there. Actually, I'm gonna make sure that I've got some hard angles in here, because glass wouldn't break with a with a rounded edge. There. I like that a little better. Just a very slightly blue mixture of that white. And let's see, we'll make an angle there. Kind of a sharp point. And drag that straight down. And then I'm gonna sign it. And there's your old shed. Thank you again to Barb Hall for letting me repaint and rework her original piece. My flat brushes and my cloud brushes are now in stock and we will have detail brushes following in the next couple of months. If you haven't yet already, please make sure you subscribe so that you can paint with me every week. If you'd like to keep painting with me today, check out these two videos that I have chosen just for you. 
Thank you as always for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.